the scoliosis get worse over time. Unfortunately, scoliosis is a progressive spinal condition, meaning it's its very nature to worsen over time. We always don't know what triggers scoliosis to develop initially, but we do know that growth is by far the number one trigger that leads to progression in adolescent stages. In adults, curves progress for different reasons, but in adolescence, it typically progresses as a result of growth. And we know scoliosis ranges in severity from mild to moderate to severe to very severe. And as this condition gets larger, the effects that are associated with this condition also become more evident. The way you determine the size of the scoliosis is by measuring something called a Cobb angle. A Cobb angle is determined during a scoliosis x-ray, and it's measuring how large the scoliosis is. Is, and it's taken by determining the, the most tilted vertebra on the top of the curvature and comparing that tilt to the most, most tilted bone in the bottom of that curvature and comparing the difference. And the size of this difference is something that we call the Cobb angle, and it's expressed in degrees. The higher the angle, the more severe and the more noticeable the effects will be. Now, the main effect in scoliosis in children is going to be postural effects. It's going to be uneven shoulders, uneven hips, uneven waist. It's not Normally what we see is what brings on the diagnosis. And then normally when we see something, normally further exams and x-rays could be taken. And that typically leads to treatment if the curve qualifies for treatment at that time. In adult patients, they may have postural findings, but what typically brings on the diagnosis and treatment is gonna be pain. The person starts to experience back pain. Normally adults start to feel back pain as a result of scoliosis, somewhere around 40 to 50 years of age. And this is because curves start to progress in later stage life, and it's progressing just because of gravity over time. And as the curve sits there, it slowly starts to increase the rate of progression, and it starts to compress on nerve tissues and areas of the spine, which can now lead to pain in the low back, pain rating in, into the legs or arms, and then the x-rays are taken, and they're typically finding a scoliosis. Now, more often than not, and even if they find scoliosis, in adult patients, the scoliosis isn't treated. In fact, it's most of the time it's discounted and not even addressed. And normally they'll treat the symptoms, like the pain that they're feeling with injections or medications. They normally don't address the size of curve. Now in children, because they don't experience a lot of pain, it's very difficult to know that the curve is worsening because the only way you know is either by taking an x-ray or by constantly checking your child's posture to see if the posture is changing or the posture is getting worse. So many cases, the, um, kids can progress with no outward symptoms other than, other than postural findings. Now, once they reach skeletal maturity and they stop growing, now the scoliosis can now become, become comp compressive at this stage and they can start experiencing some dull, achy pain, very, you know, very mild in nature that will increase as they compress in the adult form. So in adolescence, you're always checking posture. In adult cases, what, you're, what normally brings on the diagnosis or the treatment is going to be pain. Now, is this progression preventable? And that's really the biggest question I get from patients is that can, what can I do to stop my curve from worsening, especially since if there's already been documented worsening. Now, we know there's never treatment guarantees, but we know if you find scoliosis early and you treat it early, there is much limits, much less limits that could be associated with your scoliosis and how much we can improve it as opposed to letting it become more severe and then trying to reduce it afterwards. That we know that if scoliosis is diagnosed and treated proactively and early, it is much simpler to treat. When we look at proactive conservative treatment, our goal is to really stop progression, reduce the size of curve, and reduce the need of invasive future spinal surgery or fusion. This is what we're trying to avoid because invasive spinal fusion and, or types of surgeries like this can be very invasive and can be life altering and there's no way to go back on it. Like once you have this type of fusion, the only other option is more surgeries and more fusion. So therefore the goal is to treat curves before this actually occurs. And the, the idea is to be more conservative approaches that are more proactive. And conservative treatment typically involves combining many types of treatment disciplines into one program. Things like chiropractic-centered approaches that look at the alignment and the structure of the spine and trying to reduce the misalignments and reduce the size of scoliosis. And therefore, by reducing the size, you reduce the chance of it worsening. And these conservative treatments, I like to call them as functional treatments because the goal is to try to restore function and strength back to the spine, not just trying to fuse it together into one solid 
rod with rods and screws. Conservative treatment tends to be more proactive because we can do it much younger and much smaller, where if your only mode of treatment is spinal fusion, we're using, you know, if you're using 20 to 15 different vertebrae in the spine, using multiple screws and rods, you have to wait for the curve to become severe enough to warrant that type of invasive treatment. However, if you have treatment that's not so invasive, doesn't have such an impact on people's lives, you can do it at much smaller stages. The reason why they have to wait for scoliosis to become severe to consider spinal fusion is because the invasiveness of the treatment. So a conservative treatment can consider many different things, but we look at scoliosis-specific types of chiropractic care. We look at scoliosis-specific physical therapies and exercises. We look at corrective bracing. We look at home rehabilitation, home exercise programs, and combining these in a manner to actually have a reductive mechanism on the curve is what's definitely the goal of this type of treatment. Now, we know when we look at scoliosis, the goal is first to stop it from progressing and reduce the size of scoliosis. In adolescence, we wanna reduce it during the growth phase because we know if we can control the size of the curve while they're growing and developing, we can reduce the risk of progression during the growth. In the adult stage, the goal is to reduce the size of the curve to reduce pain and discomfort. And also as by making the curve smaller, we reduce the effects of gravity and compression over time. So in both stages, the smaller the curve, the better. Now, we also know that as curves get more severe and as patients get older, the harder the curve is to treat. So my rule of thumb is the younger the patient, the smaller the curve, the better the results among, among the same person. So we always want to treat curves smaller and younger. Unfortunately, traditional types of treatment options don't offer treatments for small and young patients. They normally say, don't worry about it, leave it alone. And the reason why they're saying that because they don't know if the curve will ever become surgical. So what they're saying is we'll deal with it once it becomes surgical. Our approach is, or our thing is that if we take a small curve and make it smaller, there's never any harm in making a small curve smaller. There's only harm occurs when you let a small curve become more severe, because as it becomes more severe, it becomes more rigid, it becomes less responsive to treatment, and it starts people start experiencing pain and discomfort, and it becomes more difficult to reverse all the effects that scoliosis is having on their lives, because it's more than just the spine. It's affecting the tissues, the organs, the muscles, the, every, every part of the body from skull to feet is the growing and developing with the curve, it becomes more and more difficult to undo those things. In fact, in many cases, you can't undo of those effects once they've become significant enough. So regardless of the condition severity, the best time to treat scoliosis is always now. Sooner is always better. There's never any benefit in letting the curve become more severe or letting the spine becoming more affected by your scoliosis in a negative way. There's never treatment guarantees, but the best way to minimize the effect of the scoliosis is to treat it proactively. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or other scoliosis questions, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish new videos just like this.